could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making me. You know, nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. You know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. But nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. What was I swear I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. We would shut down. We're going to get into migration, some of the things that's going on um, with the border crisis. But before we get into the border crisis, this is what I want to say, because um, there's a video that I'm going to react to, I think, towards the end. So, uh, well, before we get into our conspiracies, if we do that tonight. But that particular video is an actual interview with the caseworker from New York that talks about the benefits that the migrants is getting, okay, in detail. She got her face blurred out, so we're going to listen to like 25 minutes of that. But before we do that, you know, I got to have a bridge topic because a lot of us, they say, we have 44 our rights to vote, and our vote makes a difference. And this lady right here, literally, they're trying to, this lady right here, she was arrested a couple of years ago. Miss Crystal Mason, black woman convicted, overturned after wrongfully prison sentence for voting. We knew in 2018 that this was wrongful conviction from the beginning. It is 2024. Literally almost five to six years later, this lady, I hope she wasn't sitting in jail this long. But all she did was vote after having a charge. She had a, she had a conviction. I don't know what type of conviction it was. It was a felony. And what I will say, guys, if you're in Georgia, a, fel a felony could be speeding. Okay. Repeated speeding. And then they sentence you 30 days in jail and a fine and you have a felony. Okay. So I don't know if this is some of the terms, but you need to understand law when you hear, oh, it's a felony. And then don't just think it's something so horrible. It could be a victimless crime period. So while this lady is fighting to vote, we got migrants that possibly will get the right to vote, okay? We already know that they're getting food, shelter, jobs, assistant, as well as the right to bear arms. I'm going to see if I could pull that up. Let me just make sure. Um, the rights to bear arms, I came across that. Yeah, yeah. The right to be police, we talked about that. Yeah, yeah. While a citizen born here, I don't care about her color, who she is, was convicted for voting. Right. The the, the rights that they're going to give to the people who are invading our border. Let's get to this story real quick. Now, Crystal Mason sent in her legal team in 2018. On Tuesday, a appeal court in Texas overturned the conviction of the egregiously absurd five-year sentence handed to a black woman for a crime she... Uh, arguably should never have been charged with in the first place. According to the Texas Tribune, the uh, the Tiernit County based second court of appeals formally acquitted Crystal Mason, who was charged with the felony for casting a provisional ballot in 2016 while on supervised release for a federal conviction. Oh, federal conviction. Do apologize. Who was charged with the felony? for Castle. She got the felony and she couldn't vote for a, fel uh, a federal conviction. Okay. So let's just let's get, get that straight. I'll, I'll concede on that. Which she didn't know made her ineligible to vote. I am overjoyed to see my faith rewarded today. Mason said in the statement, I was thrown into this fight for voting rights and will keep swinging to ensure no one else has to face what I endured for the last six years. A political ploy with minority voting rights are under attack. And I'm going to be honest, this is all y'all voting rights. What Trump fighting for? Huh? Huh? It wasn't all black people votes who allegedly he said the votes were stolen. Keep playing. This is assassination on everybody's voting rights. But my thing is that mm -hmm. I ain't talk about it. Like Terrio College, we're just gonna we're just gonna move on. 
and you know all of this stuff is bought and paid for so y'all can continue to vote i i don't i can't i don't contest y'all to vote i'm not going to dab a little anybody that vote because this is something that you feel that will help you but certain systems i don't even want to play a part in now I know it's important for us to vote. I do. I do. You know, but it just seems like every time we put something in somebody in a particular situation to be a leader, be it a congressperson, be it a mayor, be it a lawyer, a prosecutor, the president, a judge, they seem to get corrupted. It, they come in with one agenda or a, a, a shopping list and never check it off. So I'm sorry, y'all, if I if I say things that discourage y'all from voting, you can vote. But me, I gave that up. I gave it up after Trump got in the office. I was over it. I was like, this shit is shenanigans. Look who we got to choose from, Hillary or Trump. As a black person, I ain't have a choice. I voted for Jill Stein. <laughs> I laugh. People don't be like, who the hell is Jill Stein? You waste the vote. No, I voted with my integrity. My last vote I cast in 2016. Yes, sir. Because I gave up on that. I do apologize. I'll help the world in another way. But it was for Jill Stein. That's the only person who I could see who lined up with some of my core values more than just one. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that was me. Anyway, so let's get to the migrants because we have Americans fighting to vote, fighting for their vote to cast. Um, I know that they found a lot of ballots in one state most recently. Um, we're going to talk about that, but not right now. But, you know, I, something always coming to my head. And I remember that. And that was just like a couple of weeks ago. And that was from the last election. And then it just went under the bridge. You know, I'm not a Trump fan. I'm not a this person, that person. I'm just real. That it was a state. It was like Midwest. And allegedly they found like 10,000 ballots or something. So we'll probably talk about that later on. But we want to keep it moving. Now, let's get into, I think we're going to get into the census. Let's see if we get into the census. Okay, no. Hold on. Let me see if I can pull up the census. Because I want to get into the migrant report thing. But it was, I had something about the census of New York guns. I got a lot of the migrant. Okay, here we go. Let me put that up first because it's going to be much shorter when we talk about the census right quick. But I'm learning a little bit more about this. So I'm going to tell you guys, I'm still learning about what they're doing with the census. I do understand nationality, though, and I do understand treaties. And I understand when you are a dual citizen that you have protections from your original country or you are protected under that. OK, and it's it's called the um, Hague. It's the Hague Agreement or something like that. All right. So with that goes to say, I explain to black people, nationality means a lot. And I really do believe that's why we are not equally yoked when we're in the court system, because we don't have adequate representation. And it's not just representation from a lawyer. But we know they bought and sold. But it, it's the status. It is... Um, the court system knowing that we have no backup system. So our, our nation can be abused. And that abuse is rolling on into every U.S. citizen because every U.S. citizen, y'all are just Americans. Y'all have detached from your nationality. If you were German, Irish, Scottish, Jamaican, Barbadian, whatever. Hold on. We'll say so many other more nations, um, Native Americans, all of that. Native Americans get protections because of their dual citizenship does that make sense so they're not really protected but they have treaties that the united states is supposed to follow based on their nationality agreement with this government does that make sense so now that we have a whole bunch of immigrants and they're creating new statuses for these people they're trying to create a general status, I think, for these people because there's just so many different diversity of them. It's like they may be creating a new category of persons to one, what um Dr. Um Dr. Uh Joe, Judge Joe Brown was talking about to create more power in whatever state has the most bodies, people, okay, and like New York, like Texas, 
Um, well, I don't, um, I don't think they're doing it on purpose. Texas don't want this shit. Texas, like, get them out of here. They're using that as a pass-through state. But Florida, you know, places like that, well, Florida don't want them there either as well. But I definitely know, I think the, the states like Chicago at first, New York, those, they wanted the migrants. They, the money, the possible power that they was going to get, but they didn't even think about the chaos that was coming. So, Let's get into this census thing and figure out a little bit about it as I dig into it in the next couple of weeks to figure out like the math behind it. So we can read it in face value, but you know me, I kind of compare it to a whole bunch of other stuff. So I can bring the math to you, like why you think they're doing this? And this is something that we haven't paid attention to. So U.S. changes how it categorized people by race and ethnicity. It's the first revision in 27 years. All right. So Orlando Ford, for the first time, 2020 um, in 27 years, the U.S. government changed how to categorize people by race and ethnicity, a effort for the federal official officials be believe will more accurately count residents who identify as Hispanic and Middle Eastern and North African heritage. This is the group of people who have come in. OK, now, but they're not Spanish. They're not Spanish. OK, or they're not Puerto Rican. So they, they have Hispanic background and there's so many different types. They're trying to capture these people. It's for money. And we're going to get into it. Let me not forget Bank of International Settlements, BIS. Just remember that because I'm going to break this down to you a little bit more, too, in the Federal Reserve. Okay. How we, we get more lent to us per person. Okay. So the revision to... The minimum categories on race and ethnicity announced Thursday by the officials of management and budget. Well, management and budget. Let's listen. Why is that department over our census? Okay. Because it's a budget that's connected to the number of people. Are the latest efforts, and they don't, they don't take care of us. Remember that. We pay them taxes. Just remember that. Okay. Well, what they, what the budget, where they getting the budget from? From us. So just listen. I'm, I'm throwing some stuff out there. Budget and management are the latest effort to label and define the people of the United States. This involved processing often reflects changes in social attitudes and immigration, as well as a wish for people in an increasing diverse society to see themselves in a number produced by the federal government to include the migrants. You can not understand the emotional impact that it has on people, said Met Meta, Senior Director of Census and Data at Equity at the Leadership Conference of the Civil and Human Rights. It's how we convince others uh, ourselves as a society. It's how we conceive uh, ourselves as a society. You are seeing as the desire for people to want to self-identify and to be reflections in the data so they can tell their own story. Counting us is telling our own story when you censoring us, taking away the first, second, and fifth amendment, and 14th about to go out the window. Yeah, we telling our stories by doing a, a data check. All right. Under the revision question about race, the ethnicity that previously were asked separately on forms, which be which will be combined into a single question, which will give, oh, they about to wipe us out, black people. If it ain't no more black category, we in trouble. We're going to be in the middle with the, what did they say? Is the Middle Eastern Africans, North African heritage. It ain't going to be no more black. I'm just playing. Uh-oh, this don't sound right. They about to they about to merge. They're gonna be merging ethnicities and, and um, nationalities, and you won't notice who disappear. Oh shit! You hear my head going to the side? I'm thinking my brain is going. Once we mute together and we not self talking about so everybody could tell their story. That's not everybody telling their story. When you leave other there, that's when you let everybody tell their story. They didn't like this because a lot of people put other. Just put other in the letter sign what it is, because I always put other. Y'all like other. Why you put other for? Because my nationality is Hebrew. Let's think about that. So under the revision question about race and ethnicity, that previously were asked separately on the form will be combined into a single question. That will give respondents the option to pick multiple categories at the same time, such as Black, 
American Indian, and Hispanic. They're going to put us all together. Oh, snap. Didn't I just say that? Researchers have shown the largest number of Hispanic people aren't sure how to answer the race question when the question is asked separately because they understand race and ethnicity to be similar and they often pick some other race or do not answer the question. Oh, my God. That's not all Spanish people. I put other. The Middle East and the North African category will be added to the choices available for questions about race and ethnicity. People descendants from places such as Lebanon, Iran, Egypt, Syria has been encouraged to identify as white. But now what have we, we now will have the option to identify themselves in a new category. Ooh. White people. White people, y'all gonna figure out your numbers when they do this. Ooh, you thought they stopped the abortion thing before? It's gonna be just like what happened in China. Uh oh, I'm keeping it real. I'm keeping it real because a lot of people will put themselves under white. I even knew some black people who thought a status change they 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 changed their nationality to white. Ah, listen, people crazy. I'm just keeping it real. I, I've been through this a few things over the years. I've been watching a few movements. I pay attention to everything. One of the movements called the Secure Party Movement that you know what I'm talking about. The Accepted for Value. They do all that stuff. Sovereign Movement. You had the black people come up with their own stuff. So they was like, since white people get the privileges, we just going to change our nationality to white. Yes. When you, you didn't know that, girl, boy, people. When I was reading on the group, I said, y'all meet the freakers, yo. I'm a Hell y'all, but they had Middle Eastern, um, like Middle Eastern, um, categorized as white. So you had the people that's in this nationality thing who were figuring out that their descendants were from the Middle East, and they figured, hey, yep, because you know that's the Middle East is Africa, right there. Iran, Iran is actually the old Canaan, that's where God's people are supposed to be at. If y'all don't remember, Middle East is nothing but Africa, the top of Africa. So we had some black people, I'm going to be honest, that they changed their status to white. I don't know if they ever got anything for benefit, but that's the truth. So y'all numbers going to drop. Mm. We're going to watch this. This is crazy. We're going to disappear in the census, and y'all numbers going to drop, white people. The black people going to disappear in the census. You know why? I'm going to say this, too. I think they need to like, okay, let me say this because of our rebellion as black people, I think they need to replace our numbers. There's more black people than they know of because a lot of us didn't participate in the census. I'm going to just be honest. It's real. A lot of black people, especially if you're from the hood, they don't even trust the census. Then you have the people that's in the rural area too. They don't walk around. So they wasn't putting all the numbers. They like, yeah, the government going to track it. Anybody who feel a little certain way, I'm telling you, did not want to participate. I think the last um, census probably was one of the lowest census participation. They tried a way to get it all out, you know, because of the COVID or whatever was going on. But I'm going to tell you this. I think they're trying to replace both of us. Okay. All right. Let me see. Um, we're going to get into this where it comes to the census in more detail. Because I think this needs to have like just a focus event. Did y'all see where my mind go? Whoa. We both in trouble. Black people, you about to disappear in the numbers? Because you see all these brown people coming. White people, your numbers are about to go down because they split in the category. Wow. All right. Mm. Border chiefs issues chilling warning keeps me up at night. Let's get to this. This was about nine days ago. I, you know, I try to break from the story of this migration thing, but I think this is going to be one of my go-to until I get up out of here because I got to keep my eye on this. Y'all up here bugging. I already told you I'm about to get some extra food, get some extra stuff, set up some money, pay some bills, work like a dog, and y'all going to be seeing me with some some trees behind me and beautiful blue water. Y'all like, what the grace now? Listen, I love y'all, but when God say I got to go, I got to go. So let's get to it. Border crisis, um, border chief issues, chilling warning, keeps me up at night. Rubio sits on the Senate. 
Well, GOP Senator Marco Rubio sits on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, knows also this industry way too well. Senator, great to see you. Thank you. Your thoughts that four of them are Tajiks. No. Watch this. Here we go. We're at, uh, you know, closing in on a million uh, entries this fiscal year alone. That number is a large number, but what's keeping me up at night is the 140,000 known gotaways. That is not part of that tally. That is not part of that tally. If we don't know who is coming into our country and we don't know what their intent is, that is a threat. And they're exploiting a vulnerability that's on our border right now. So he may be appointed by the Biden administration, but he's speaking, uh, look out, he's, he's giving a warning to the administration. Yeah, ultimately, look, think about it this way. If you're ISIS, you want to attack the United States, you say, hey, we got to get 10 people in there to do an attack. Well, it's easy. Let's just send them across the southern border. We already traffic people for money. Let's just stick 10 of them in there with fake passports. These guys can buy, you can buy passports. There's like dozens of countries that you can buy a document that says you're so-and-so, and it's an official government document you bribe somebody for. Now you're inside of America. And it only took four people to do what they did in Moscow. We've had nine million something people that have entered this country unlawfully and illegally. It only takes four to do this kind of carnage. But Senator Stop right there. Because he said 100 million people got away. So the numbers that they're giving us is not even counting the people who literally just snuck past. We have been having an increase of sex trafficking a little bit. They allegedly not a little bit. They've been bringing young kids. You'll watch these males with babies and no feet, no kid, no wife with them. It's weird. All right. Now you have migrants who come in and not only talking about you want to give us a job, place to live, do their thing. I told you, you think that they so different than us. They have given them internet, just like in Haiti. Haiti got internet. And we got all these people, we got influences in Haiti. We have a migrant influence, Lanon Marano, waves around cash and he mocks U.S. taxpayers who work like slaves after he urges followers, illegals, to become squatters in U.S. home. And I'm reading it like that because it needs to penetrate your mind. This is ridiculous. Not only did he come over and find out the loophole, because this is a major issue for us in America. Me as a um, home, a tax investor who have different properties, this is something that I have, you know, my course that I show you guys, I teach my students this. You have to secure your home. It's going to be hard. You get somebody there, they lie, put some paperwork together. The only way that it's going to be unrevealed of the truth is when you're in front of the judge. The timeline the money it costs to get it out, you need to be prepared. Put a dog in there and make sure they're ready to bite somebody's head off because there's no protection for landlords. But they do have a new law that they passed in Florida. I'm going to be talking about on, on Friday on um, Secure Your Energy. And that that law is literally stand your ground on crunk. Said if any home invaders come in, you have the right to shoot. And they said that home invasions went on down. I have to respect Florida with that, even though you don't like history. You shit, you know how to protect your house. It is what it is. So this is the mugshot of the migrant influencer. Influencer. Massive followers probably too. While we on our channel, my channel, your channel, our channel, five people. It'd be all right though. It'll be all right. The mugshot of the migrant influencer. Hit the like button, guys. Get me in the algorithm. You know I'm talking about the things that they don't want to talk about or things a little different. I'll make y'all think from the outside. Y'all may not agree all the time, but at least you could, I could blow your mind a little bit and you could think outside the box. How about that? Hit the like button. I appreciate you. Thank you. So the mugshot of the migrant influencer, one of the lame in the U.S. after Fleeing immigration officials hit has surfaced for the first time as a freeloading Venezuelan took to social media, gaining the mocking American taxpayers for working like slaves. Lennon Marano, who has been named himself on TikTok by encouraging other people to invade U.S. and U.S. and squat at homes of citizens, skip out on ICE authorities soon after crossing the southern border into Texas illegally in 2022. The Venezuelan national was originally enrolled in an alternative to detention program and was cut loose on parole due to lack of space in the detention center. Look at him. He was quickly listed as an abscore, abscore from the program and he failed to show up 
from the later court date in internal immigration and custom enforcement record, record show. In his original mugshot, the so-called migrant influence can be seen starting staring um, blankly ahead and fair, fair crying from the gleeful social media video he's been posting. Sorry, y'all. It comes to the defendant Mario posting a fury of fury of videos to Instagram on Wednesday of himself flashing wads of cash the same day he was booted from TikTok over similar content. I didn't cross the Rio Grianaro to work like a slave. I told you, did I tell you? That's exactly what I said. I said that these migrants is going to come here and realize that we work hard and we work hard, but we don't get the pay rate that we want. Literally, you already know what minimum wage is. You literally know what we have been fighting for. But if you understand math, our minimum wage versus the inflation here is probably the same minimum wage versus inflation in other countries and in places like what's happening now in Hawaii, what's happening in Jamaica, what's happening where this inflation is just out of pocket and the people there can't survive. So now you got the migrants coming here. Didn't I tell you? They're going to get a whole wake up call and realize that ain't nothing free. But guess what? Because our influencer is across the world and you couldn't even tell that this young man was raised in Brooklyn, from Brooklyn, whatever. You can't tell he looked different. He don't look different. That's why the census is going to be able to put us together in a category. Literally inciting people to take people property, use the government, skip out on immigration. And he was released allegedly because the jails were too full. How about that? So right now he's back in custody. We definitely know he's back in custody right now and he's facing deportation. They're getting him out. He, um, click his on it for them. Yeah. He's going to be deported. They have him in custody and in, in, in Ohio. All right. So at least one, one, we hear one good story where they started to deport them out. Okay. Because this is, this is out of control. This is out of control. Now, feds bust three mi migrants after raiding New York home of gun toting gun dealer squatters just a day after reporting on Bronx chaos. Let's go. New York is going down. You wanted that money? You wanted that money? You had to deal with coming in now. Here we go. This is out of control. Start from the beginning. Home to the migrant squatters. Let's see. Let me see. Them. Like Jersey. You can tell us New York. Hey, this is Brian Look, regular people, regular clothes, regular girl. Let's see what's going on with this. Okay, federal agent arrested three people during a Wednesday raid in the Bronx home of a group of gun-toting, drug-dealing migrant squatters. A immigration authority moved to depart, deport one of the crew busted at the troublesome house. The raid by Homeland Security came days after the Post reported on the chaos the squatters brought since they have taken over the multifamily dwelling, ending with the eight migrant bust on gun and drug charges last week. Look. New jeans, like listen, we about to live up here. They about to turn up. Look, Venezuela. Told you from around Venezuela about to get their money back from us. This is like Jersey. The um the post report witnessed nearly a dozen agents brung out of handcuff, brung out a handcuffed man and woman. Both of them were Spanish speaking on Wednesday afternoon. They done brung a whole bed in there. They made they you listen, they disgusting. They just made that their house. 
It says the spokesman for the U.S. Immigration and Custom Enforcement agents confirmed the raise, but wouldn't give specific information about what agency we're looking for. Meanwhile, the man arrested on the gun charges last week arrived back at the house and told the post that he planned on moving out. Oh, my God. He got bail. I'm moving. Uh, Hector, the eight, at the, eight, the 24-year-old man said, they tracked me, they tricked me into living here. Who the hell tricked you into, who tricked you into living here? Us? What? What they got going on? Look at this. Told you. They got access to guns, drugs. Look, he look white. Don't he look white, y'all? This is suspect gunman Hector Dose Ventuala is free on supervised release. Don't he look white? He look like you, don't he? You can't tell the difference. Thought they was just gonna be black. Well, he looks Spanish. Well, anyway, I wanted to show you that, okay? This is, I'm telling you the truth. Y'all not going to be able to tell the difference between these migrants. And you thought it was just because you're going to be, oh, well, they black. We ain't got nothing to worry about. That man look white to me. He, that Venezuela is a lot of light-skinned Venezuela. It's very pale. Look at that. And the hair looking kind of brown. Looking like a white. Mess around, y'all. Everybody going to be the target because of this shit. They ain't going to know who. Police going to be so afraid. Gonna be so freaking afraid. All right. Now, New York test. Okay, no, let's get into this before we get into that. New York. Okay. Yeah, let's get into the New York deport migrants. And then we're going to, I'm gonna save that census one too, because we're gonna get into that. New New York deport migrants, and then we're gonna do our last reaction for about 20 minutes to an actual caseworker in New York. It was a video I found. And it's called, his name is Nick Shirley Interview. Young Caucasian boy, I like him. He seemed like a nice boy. And he got this interview from the social worker. And you're going to hear what they're giving them. But before we do that, NYC starts to pour in migrants. They better before NYC go meet a freaking bankrupt. They're going to go bankrupt. Between the crime and the businesses that's closing in New York and people moving out, they're going to be giving more than they're getting. Let's go. New York City is simply going broke. They're spending billions of dollars on migrant crisis with nothing to show for. In fact, New York City is spending so much time, expertise, and cash on the migrant crisis that they're neglecting the other sectors that are paying for the migrant crisis, wow. which are the small mom and pop stores. Many of them are leaving for places like Southern Florida. In fact, so many companies have moved out. Even entire malls have shut down in New York City. Yep. This is no longer the best place to do business. And many of these migrants, they are asleep on the streets because now New York is starting to evict a bunch of migrants. Now the homeless population is skyrocketing. This is no longer the place to do business. So many companies, corporations, and people have left New York City. Almost 600,000 people have left New York City in the past three years. Mm -hmm. That's about 8% of the total population. Wow. Look at this. We also have how much the hotels in New York City are making off the current micro crisis. We're looking at almost a million dollars per day, 6.2 million per week, and almost $30 million a month. This is a lot of money. That Do you see what they're making off of the migrants? And you're telling me they can't house us, the homeless people in New York? They can't create. There's a lot of empty buildings in New York right now that they refuse to give to the homeless population. And I'm not talking about the migrants. I'm talking about the homeless population. This is the incentive for New York to do what they're doing. Look how much money they get. That is being spent on the migrant crisis. Wow. In fact, New York City is so down bad, they're willing to pay migrants to leave New York City because <laughs> they cannot keep up with this sort of price. And guess what? Hundreds of hotels in New York City are actually very happy about this. They actually enjoy a bunch of migrants in their hotels because they make a bunch of money from the city. But how long can the city keep paying these massive bills before they go broke? Because now they're shutting down the shelters. Is there going to be a time when they start shutting down the hotels because they can't pay for them? Well, time will tell. But at the end of the day, New York is still going to be spending 9 to $10 billion this year. This is still down from $12 billion, a little bit better. But still, we're looking at billions of dollars 
being spent on the migrant crisis. That's Many of them is. are no bid contracts. New York City man speaks about the migrants. It's one thing to help people out, but not at the expense of people who pay the humongous New York City taxes. It's diminishing the quality of life. You're really taking away from the services that many of these taxpayers are paying for. They're getting taxed three times. This is wild. There's so many of these interviews on X, on YouTube, on TikTok. Watch them yourself. You won't find a single New Yorker who is pro-sanctuary city status. Exactly. I'm going to leave this for you because I don't want to play his full video. I like this young man. We're going to be playing his next video. I want to leave his um, link for you guys to watch him because he's doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one straight um, interviews. This is market gain. So this is the next video that I want to show you. This is Nick Shirley. And Nick Shirley, <laughs> I think this these both his channel. They got to be because they look the same. They got to be the same person. No, and I'm not being funny, y'all. You see this gentleman up there? This is Market Gain. I'm going to share his YouTube page. And then there's another little Caucasian boy that I like. You know, got decent content. Young and can articulate himself. And is little, like a little professional. And this one is him interviewing a caseworker. And this, so this is Nick Shirley interview. And that do look like the other boy. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Don't kick my butt, y'all. Okay. Maybe you got two channels, but I'm gonna send, see, send both. I'm gonna share both links with you. Okay, now we're gonna listen to some of this interview um, as we head off. Okay, because you know how I feel about the migrant issue. I'm gonna let this play out for a little while, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up seeing you on Sunday. Okay, Sunday I have a whole bunch of other topics that I want to talk to you about, and maybe I can find that other boat that crashed into the side of the dock. And all of the, the cranes start flying, falling down. Okay, I'm going to find that video. But until then, let's watch this content creator, NYC migrant worker, expose the system, Nick Shirley interview. Shout out to our intellectual young people. Thank you. I want to give them a hug. Come on, let's go. New York City that works with all the migrants here. Her face. Don't you, don't you do a commercial. Hold on, let this commercial play through, y'all. See what we got going on around here. Ooh, you want to do me like that? They better not have took his stuff back. I mean, took it off. Okay, took it off. You know how they are. Take people's stuff off. Hold on. Look at them. Hold on, y'all. Y'all see what's going on with my camera? I mean, my screen. I'm probably moving fast in here. Her face is. I'm here with a case manager worker here in New York City that works with all the migrants here. Her face is blurred because she can't show who she is. Uh, we don't want to put her job at risk. However, she's going to be telling us about what is going on here and how the migrants are being treated and what they're getting as far as social security, uh, money, rent, anything like that. Um, we're going to be talking about that. So, what do you do here in New York City? Um, I am caseworker supervisor. I work with a nonprofit organization, basically case managing the migrants' lives, um, providing them with any resources, referrals that they need, whether it's legal assistance, um, benefits if they qualify, um, any of those sorts of help. And what are you seeing on a day-to-day -day basis with how these migrants are being treated and what they're going through? I mean, I realize that I get to see both sides of the world. I get to see how many of these migrants, a lot of them do come for the the need of asylum. Some are just taking advantage of the system. However, I know at first the best services of the food, it depended on the shelter, honestly. Some of them got good food, other shelters did not. It was frozen food. They recently just updated the um, services and it's a better food um, kind of quality for the migrants. But at now, due to their legal status, if they get their asylum, they get the TPS, whatever type of legal document that supports them being able to stay here, now they're able to qualify for legal um, public assistance, meaning food stamps and cash assistance. Um, so a lot of them are receiving those type of services from the government, um, especially a lot of them come here pregnant. So as soon as they birth an American child, they automatically qualify for those public benefits. So a lot of them are receiving public benefits of the United States. Yes. And they're getting free money, 
free help from the tax dollars of the United States. Food stamps and cash assistance. Now, we're hearing in the news that they're getting, vouchers are getting paid um, to live a year upstate somewhere, a full year for free, right? Um, so is this where our tax money is going? Like, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm listening to this with y'all. Y'all remember I had said that the other day that that state said that they were going to give the homeless people one year in like outside camps, the homeless people of America, but they're going to give them one year of living assistance. All right. I won't interrupt no more. Just listen to this nonsense. I'm not, you know, it's very difficult to say what America has turned to. Like, what about us, the people living here? What are you doing for us? Mm -hmm. How much money do you think it costs per migrant just for a day? <sighs> Depending on the way are, they are sheltered, because um, that's basically what it's based off. Um, some locations, I would say, range from like 3000 to at most 7000 I'll say, depending on where they are. A located. day or... Uh, I think it's a month per a month. month. Per month, each migrant yeah. is costing about three to seven thousand dollars here in the per United month. States. And do they have to do anything in exchange for what they're receiving, as far as getting free food stamps? Do they have to work? Do they have to do anything? Once they get the work permit, because that's the most how they get it. Yes, they have to go find work, basically. Um, but before to... that, before they're able to get it, do they have to do anything in return? Or is it just free? No, they did not. It's it's just services provided. It's free. But that's just how the system is set up. Because mm -hmm. even us Americans can apply. But that's how the system is. The poor just keep getting all those benefits, you know, and that's how the society stays. Like they want people to stay at that lower class and get free money. But it's like now these are migrants. So it's a free for all. I thought it was like, you know, different aspects, different levels to it. And how do you feel seeing all this corruption from what you've been seeing with your job? There is a lot of corruption in the sense that the migrants have honestly now made the city completely the dynamics of it the demographics everything just completely change and swift in the, in a way that america was not ever before now there's more violence in the streets we don't know we cannot say it's due to them now mental health is out of you know out there our veterans like there's just our people our homeless people here they do not receive the services that they should they, sh they do not all this money that is going out there that is being spent elsewhere could be spent in here with our people here our mental health people here our our homeless our veterans our our taxpayers you know what i mean and then yes we can definitely help some of these migrants but is it to what extent so you want to know where to invest a thousand dollars right now well forget about stocks real estate or cryptocurrency there is a little known trend taking america by storm right now called digital at, you know, I do understand some of them do need the help. They are coming from a country of many violence, death, decapitation. I understand their journey coming here because I've heard a lot of experiences where they come through jungles and different paths, right? They see certain bodies. Um, so it's like, it's, it's difficult to really say who deserves it, right? And who doesn't. Now it's us, up to us Americans to decide that, I guess, whether it's voting, deciding to vote, see what this actually do your research educate yourselves and figure out what will make america really great again and what percentage of migrants do you think are actually suffering that are coming here do you think the majority are actually suffering in their countries or are they just hear that oh it's a free pass you get free money once you get to america now is the time to come the border is wide open so because of social media and everything going out there and i've seen videos of migrants themselves saying it because that's the system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, I have a child here, an American child. I gave birth here. Guess what? She's a citizen. She gets birth certificate social. She can qualify for public assistance. She's giving us $500 a month of food stamps, $140 on monthly in cash assistance. And it's like, that's free money. Why not? Right? Well, it's easy, I guess, now. So, I don't know to what extent this is going to continue. I don't know what changes needs to be done, but we really need to just educate ourselves and do our research. Mm -hmm. Wow. So people are just posting on social media now that basically now is the time to come to America. Basically. So the majority of the people that you work with that are claiming asylum, that are working for their papers, how many of them do you think are really fleeing bad circumstances that are in their lives are really in danger in their countries? From a percentage... 
I would say from one to 100, a good 40, 40 to 45 for the most part based on my building itself. Um, now I can only imagine other different shelters, right? Maybe different. So it depends on the type of um, the country they came from. So some of them qualify for certain TPS, um, TPS that's what it's called, Temporary Protective Services. Um, a lot of them are from Venezuela. That's one of the countries that I am aware of. Um, so what countries are flagged is like, okay, they're actually fleeing. For the moment, the Venezuelans, because when we do the TPS referrals, is for Venezuelans. That's dangerous, y'all. I'm just going to be honest. D Venezuela, look up the history of Venezuela and how America caused the coup there. And you're going to see why the migrants coming from there have this disposition. Okay, maybe I'm going to do a special on Venezuela because these they coming over here with the game. Okay, and are is countries like Ecuador, Colombia, are they red flagged? Or? So they just, they can go and qualify for political asylum and then they will be identified there depending on their supporting documents of as to why they had to flee. Oh, okay. So that's how the process works. They mm -hmm. have to then present themselves eventually to a judge after claiming asylum? Yes, they but have to. Um, be before that, do they have to come talk to somebody like you to prepare their case? Or? If they are lucky enough to have a provider take over that specific shelter, um, sometimes they do have workers there that may help them, but not everything is a word to mouth. So they hear other people talk. So it's, you know, if one place says this, because I do remember when we first opened up, um, we had people from uh, clients from other shelters come to our shelter asking for help, but we could not service them because we were only focusing on our, like, you know, the building was bought for only that specific building. Mm -hmm. And with all the people that are coming here into the United States, and with the elections coming up in 2024, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think we're going to see some riots from migrants? For example, for example, if uh, the Make America Great guy gets back in, do you think you're going to see riots from mi migrants that aren't trying to get deported again? So we're going to see a lot of anything. We don't know what to expect, right? Um, honestly, I feel like if Americans decide to stand up, we will see that riot, right? We did stand up for what was going off in the Middle East and, you know, out there. Um, I do see a little more social movements going on, but it's honestly up to us. What are we deciding to do now? If, you know, next 2024, um, there's a shift in who becomes president, then we just need to see what will happen. They may create a lot of riot because a lot of them won't qualify and they will be deported. Um, some of them will be able to stay because they have their work permit and social and they have temporary protective status. So it's going to be a, a battle. Either way, we'll be expecting chaos pretty much. Basically, in any aspect. So it depends on us Americans, what are we going to do? So on top of all this that's going on, a lot of these migrants are also receiving their, these social security cards. And how are they getting social security if they're um, here illegally? How do they get social security? They are provided with referral to legal services. As soon as they come in through the border, the immigration papers all have a pro bono legal service. They just have to call, obviously the high volume, it's massive. Like it's very difficult to reach somebody to receive assistance. Now, like I mentioned, if a nonprofit organization takes over, now they have caseworkers, then they can provide them with other referrals and outside community services, offices, agencies that help them apply for those type of um, social security and work permits and they get that social security and what do you think the end goal is with them getting social security um the end is to stay here um some of them do find jobs some of them don't um because they know they're just getting free money from the government and with these social security that. cards will they be able to vote in the elections yes this is why i stopped Hold on, guys. I'm going to let this commercial go by. But I told you that eventually they're going to be able to, they're going to let these people vote. And my thing is that they said specifically that we were running out of Social Security for us, for the baby boomers, for the next generation. How do they have Social Security for people who never put in? This is amazing. Let's listen to what they're going to say about voting. And with these social security that. cards, will they be able to vote in the elections? Yes, they will. They will be able wow. to be able to vote. And are you seeing a big push of these migrants getting these social security cards so they can vote come November? 
I do definitely see that. I have seen many influencers speak about that, and I never thought about that in a way. Um, and then, honestly, seeing more of that really opened my mind and really do a little more research. And I'm like, it's honestly wide opening that how much they're pushing this, and I never thought about it because of the elections. So now I just want to see how everything will play out. Wow. At the end of the day, do you think the reason why they haven't stopped people from coming into the country is for these elections, that by the time that it gets to the time of November, in election time, they'll have 2 million, up to 8 million new voters. And most of these people are most likely going to be voting for the person that's keeping them here in the country. That's definitely a possibility, definitely. But then I also see a lot of us now seeing a change. So the ones of us that can vote, I know myself, and I am sadly to say I've never voted even when I was in college. And I just, because I'm a migrant myself, right? I came here when I was five years old, but we never received these type of help back then as compared to how these migrants are receiving so much services now. Um, but I received my papers not so recently, so now I'm a, a, a citizen um, for the U.S. Wow, wow, wow. Guys, this is the typical story of how immigration used to work. It was not a joke. This was not a one-day thing, cross the border, you get your papers. Do you hear that they're giving them legal services the day they come in to file for their legal status so they can get their social security card, which catapults them into being able to vote? You even heard her say, oh, I didn't have not voted. It's a lot of people in this United States that have not voted. It's not just because of their political feelings or felt like me. It's because of their social status. They wasn't able to. Now, all of a sudden, because they're in crisis, United States need a replacement population, allegedly. Now they're letting everybody get their papers. You already know the incentive could be the low birth rates across the world. Let's continue to listen. US and the way America has been, it has not been as bad, but now the change, I definitely see it. And with all the voting that's about to happen, I'm definitely gonna vote this year um, because I've definitely educated myself and I've opened myself to a possibility of, if I wanna make a change, we need to speak up. Because if we do not, then how is anything gonna change? How? Nothing's gonna happen. Because we're not speaking up, we're not saying anything. We're not taking action, that's the problem. If we do not take action, we're not going to make that change. Now, guys, you know, I'm going to have to add on to that commentary. I'm not trying to be, you know, like that. But voting is not the only way that you can make a change. Grassroot movements, you in your neighborhood, creating food pantry, creating buying properties to house people at reasonable prices, creating homeless shelter, hospitals. We keep depending on this government who I know we have a reason to because we're paying them. We're giving them our taxes. So we're expecting it to come back, but obviously that's not happening. So all I'm saying is that voting is not the only way that you can do it. It is a mainstream way. And I do think you guys, if that's what you feel like you should do, do it, but have a backup plan, baby. We need uh boys and girls clubs. We need mentorship programs. They're not going to do that. We have to do that grassroots. And then if you want your government to participate on it, go get a government contract and have them pay you for something you already established. I just got to add that on there because that'd be the main go-to. And they keep us trapped like all we can do is press a button. You can do way more than that. After doing some research on the website USA.gov, this is the criteria for people who can vote. And it does not look like illegal immigrants will be able to vote. However, it says... In some areas, non-citizens are able to vote in local elections. With all these people that are coming over, they brought over around 8 million. And there's going to be people like you who maybe were on the other side of uh, the red side, I guess I'll say that. Yes. Um, now I'm flipping from blue to red. Do you think there will be more people than that 8 million that are going to flip over to the red? I feel like there's a high possibility that yes a lot of because i when i hear a lot of conversations with co-workers or outside i'm just you know in public like i definitely do hear a lot of people speaking that they are changing from blue to red and it's because of what's been happening what's the no offense but like who, look who's our president 
Yo. That's all I'm going to say. No offense. Look who's our president. Yes. And a lot of people are going to turn red. I'm going to be honest. Even if I participated in voting, I'll be voting for Trump my damn self because this right here is out of control. She said, look who's in the office. Sleepy Joe. Creepy Joe. Let's finish listening. <laughs> and another concern I have with all these migrants is I talked to a lot of them and they all either speak Spanish or they speak French and there is no sign of them trying to learn English. Um, definitely so. In my demographics, it's definitely, I would say, a lot of Spanish-speaking clients, but as well, we do see Russian, we do see um, Bambara. I've never knew that language. And Wait, guys, y'all know how to press mute. She said she see Russian people here. Now they, they try to get a asylum too. Or maybe, or maybe they the secret army. That's all I'm saying. I thought that I, we wouldn't get no Russian people over here. She said no Russian too. Someone told me that in New York and New Jersey, there's this area of a, a lot of Russians. And I was like, no, that's not the truth. I'm going to look into that. Just like it's a little China, there's a little Russia. But we will keep you posted. And honestly, hearing of that, I it doesn't matter what migrant comes in. It's just it's a free for all. Um, especially it depends, you know, I knew, I do understand, like I mentioned before, a lot of them do need that help. They do need the asylum because they do speak about that, those traumatic things that happens in their own country where they see their own family being murdered. Um, you know, so it's very traumatic. I do understand, you know, that side. Um, but then now because the media out there, people, word of mouth, the way the system is, they are seeing that it's a free fall, that that's the ticket. That's mm -hmm. the ticket to society in America. And is there any incentives for them to learn English or are they trying or are there any programs that are helping them? So we do um, give them um, referrals to go and apply for some schools. It could be high schools. It could be communities around the area that provide them with um, English classes. Um, some do take it, some don't. Um, after a certain point, they no longer um, like can do the services, like that's it. Okay, and now, now recently, like actually today, Mayor Adams said he's only gonna be giving these migrants 30 days in these shelters and they can't reapply. I think that's, I'm not sure if that includes families or, or so, but our migrant, now are you seeing a shift in migrants being sent to other states such as like Arizona or just anywhere outside of New York, are migrants being now shipped to other locations? I have personally not seen around my um, area of field that happening. I do know that they were providing them with vouchers to be moved out of state for a year, whether it was Buffalo, Nepal, Syracuse. Um, you know, after that year, I think that was it. They would receive no more services, no more payouts. Um, but they would pay for that full year for their rent. Um, some of them have been taking that and moved out. Others did not. They wanted to stay here um, and continue receiving the services here. When I would ask them, why you know you didn't take the opportunity because later on they actually came back and asking if that was an option but it wasn't anymore um so then i see also that the the different um i don't know how to explain that it's like the different opportunities they can get compared to what we can get here and then they're also using it to their advantage um it's very appalling like it's very it's very hard breaking to see this heart like, the system is really corrupt yeah uh, so there, there's a lot of corruption here in new york city and just in the system altogether. definitely it's definitely there's no system in place um i'm not no politician myself i'm just learning i just started you know reading a little more into it but honestly just by seeing it feeling it coming here as a migrant myself as five-year-old child to now um, a college graduate because I did take advantage of that. See, um, school helped me receive my um, benefits. I didn't have to pay for it, right? So, but I did something with it now. So then some of these migrants, they do not, they just take advantage of the system. Others, like I mentioned, they do need that help. They do come here for a reason. Um, so to that, I would say it's gonna be a battle. In last
The real estate market often seems like a distant world where only an elite of experts is successful. In a time of so much uncertainty in the air and bad news, realist investing can seem intimidating. But today, I want to tell you that if you make the right decision today, you can enter the real estate market from the back door. Bad credit record? No credit at all. Do you dread the idea of having a home loan? Do you dream of owning investment properties? You are in the right place and right time because we have created a program which is a tax lien and deed investment online course of only 14 hours. This course is specially designed for people like you who have big dreams. You will learn at your own pace and everything from your home computer. This is your chance. Join our membership for $19.99 a year. What are you waiting for? Visit our website primetimehomebuyerbuyback.org and sign up today for course access.